Tyler. I mean, I just think I just don't see psychological hangover. I just don't, you know, I just think it's how players develop, what new players you bring in, who you lose and then injuries. And, you know, you're dead right about this. This uh, I know the future is bright. Sky's the limit. All the cliches. Right. right. But this is not automatically the team of the future. I mean, Jordan Love did not miss a snap this year. Now, he might well get hurt. And they we don't even know if they have a backup in Sean Clifford. I mean, the odds are he will probably miss a game at least one next year. That's just the way the NFL is. I imagine half the quarterbacks in the league lost a, lost a start this year due to injury. And then when he goes down, I mean, the whole thing changes, and there's losses here or there that you're not expecting. Um, Aaron Jones will be 30 late next season. I mean, he was as valuable as anybody on that offense. He had an unreal close. He was their MVP down the stretch. So, you know, you just don't know. But uh, but they really blew one here. And that's kind of the way it has been with Matt LaFleur for five straight years. I mean, you look at these defeats. At San Francisco gets blown out. Home against Tampa Bay. Bad weather. He's favored. He loses to Brady. San Francisco at home. Jimmy Garoppolo loses that 13-10 on the block punt. Last year, chance to get in the playoffs. Favored heavily against the Lions, loses twenty to sixteen, and this year after a great victory over Dallas, one of their best playoff victories in years, he gets beat at San Francisco in a game he should have won. So he's uh, he's zero five in these big games, these elimination games, and he's won all these games. He's won fifty nine games. He's never been to a Super Bowl. Where do you want to start? Where can you start? Well, let's start with. Um, the things that d- didn't go good, what cost him in this game, okay? Rashawn Gary, where was he in this game? I mean, there was pretty good pressure on Purdy, but where was Gary? Like, he was nowhere in this game, man. And I'll just tell you right now, I'm ranking Preston Smith ahead of Gary at edge rusher in this NFC North that that the readers will see in, in one day from now. One scout argued to that extent, and I agreed with him. The safeties. Not only the drop interception, but the tackling by Owens and Savage. Totally unacceptable, and you, they've, they've got to get two starting safeties, period. Carlson in the missed field goal. Just can't have it. And he had a bunch of misses all year. Jordan Love, a ridiculous interception. You get that ball, the way the NFL is set up, the odds are at least 50-50 you get a tying field goal, Tyler. It's just not that hard to throw these little dink and dunk and hit Kraft for eight out in the flat, and then you do this and you do that, and you hit Jones on a check down, and then you got a 45-yard field goal, and Carlson makes it, and it's OT. Totally blew it. He had the other pick that set up a field goal. Um, so, I mean, he just had a horrible second half. The receivers in this game, just so-so. I mean, I didn't see Dobbs getting great separation. I didn't see Watson do anything. Um, They really played to their age in this game. Failure in the red zone. That's on the floor. It's on love. Two out of five. Um, What was great before we start the positional? They lose Zach Tom in mid-third quarter against Nick Boza, Mm -hmm. and Boza does not kill their number three tackle. That is a tribute to their – to LaFleur ability to massage that. It's a tribute to Yash Nijman. It's a tribute to Butkus, the old line coach, Stanovich, the, the OC. Tremendous job making up for Zach Tom's absence. And then just Aaron Jones. I mean, uh, he might have been the best player on the field. He was incredible. He was every bit as good as Christian McCaffrey. And then they had breaks in this game. You had an underdog reign, Tyler. That benefits the underdog every every step of the way. Yeah. It reduced the crowd noise. Those fans out in, uh, not Candlestick, whatever it is, Levi's Stadium, they showed that picture of uh, the two announcers sitting there before the start of the third quarter. The seats looked about 15% full. Everybody must have been hiding during the intermission. I don't know <laughs> if they made it back. And then the Packers get a huge break. They lose Debo Samuel after nine snaps, right? Yes, yes. Massive. Lest we forget. And you can't take advantage of that. So a lot of guys played down on on a day when they couldn't have people play down. 
moral victories, forget all that stuff. This team, who cares about the odds? They didn't even know anything. These pundits, I had a Green Bay 27, losing 27-23. I knew how good they were. But these people, forget this national stuff. I mean, they're not watching this team every day. And they're not seeing the negative San Francisco had. I mean, I wasn't sold on Purdy to start with. So this this was a really close game. I give Niners the edge. And they won this thing, but they really, they shouldn't have. Green Bay had this thing there for the taking, and they dropped the ball. This is as crushing a defeat as the Tampa Bay game, the San Francisco game, both in Lambeau, the Lion game last year. It's equally. And it comes on the heel of a fantastic performance against Dallas. Let's not lose sight of that. So that's my overall assessment, Ty.